Second Estrus. The second book of the Nabi Ezra. Bond of Seriyahu. Bond of Azariahu. Bond of Hilkiyahu. Bond of Shalom. Bond of Sadiq. Bond of Ahutub. Bond of Ahiyahu. Bond of Penehas. Bond of Ali. Bond of Amr Yahu. Bond of Azriyahu. Bond of Miramoth. Bond of Arna. Bond of Uzi. Bond of Buki. Bond of Abishua. Pinehas. Bond of Ali Ezer. Bond of Aharon. Of the tribe of Lewi. Who was captive in the land of the Madites. In the reign of Xerxes. King of Persia. And the word of Yahuwah came to me. Saying. Go your way. And show my people their sinful deeds, and their children their wickedness which they have done against me, that they may tell their children's children, because the sins of their fathers are increased in them, for they have forgotten me, and have offered to foreign mighty ones. Am not I even he who brought them out of the land of Mishraim, from the house of bondage? But they have provoked me to wrath, and despised my counsels. Pull off the hair from your head, and throw all evil upon them. For they have not been obedient to my law, but are rebellious people. How long shall I endure them, to whom I have done so much good? I have destroyed many kings for their sakes. I have struck down Pharaoh with his servants, and all his strength. I have destroyed all the nations before them. And in the east I have scattered the people of two provinces, even of Sor and Sidon, and have slain all their enemies. Therefore you speak to them, saying, Thus says Yahuwah, I led you through the sea, and from the beginning gave you a wide and safe passage. I gave you Moshe for a leader, and Aharon for a priest. I gave you light and a pillar of fire. And I have done great wonders among you, yet have you forgotten me? Says Yahuwah. Thus says Yahuwah the Almighty. The quails were as a sign to you. I gave you boots for your safety. Still you grumbled there, and did not overcome in my name for the destruction of your enemies. But even to this day you still grumble. Where is the good that I have done for you? When you were hungry and thirsty in the wilderness, did you not cry out to me, saying, Why have you brought us out into this wilderness to kill us? It would have been better for us to have served the Mitrites than to die in this wilderness. Then I took pity on your groaning and gave you manna to eat, so you ate bread of Malachim. When you were thirsty, did I not split the rock, and waters flowed out to your field? For the heat I covered you with the leaves of the trees. I divided among you a fruitful land, I drove out the Canaanites, the Perizzites, and the Philistines before you. What more shall I do for you? Says Yahuwah. Thus says Yahuwah the Almighty. When you were in the wilderness, at the river of the Amorites, thirsting and blaspheming my name, I did not send fire for your blasphemies, but threw a branch in the water and made the river sweet. What shall I do unto you, O Yaakov? You, Yehuda, will not obey me. I shall turn myself to other nations, and to them I shall give my name, that they may guard my laws. Since you have forsaken me, I shall also forsake you. When you desire for me to show favor to you, I shall show no kindness to you. Whenever you call upon me, I do not hear you, for you have defiled your hands with blood, and your feet are swift to commit murder. It is not as though you have forsaken me, but your own selves, says Yahuwah. Thus says Yahuwah the Almighty. Have I not treated you as a father his sons, as a mother her daughters, and a nurse her young infants, that you will be my people, and I shall be your lord, that you will be my children, and I shall be your father? I gather you together, as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings. But now, what shall I do to you? I shall throw you out from my presence. When you offer unto me, 
I shall turn my face from you. For I have rejected your solemn feast days, your new moons, and your circumcisions. I sent to you my servants, the prophets, whom you have taken and slain, and torn their bodies in pieces, whose blood I shall require of your hands. Says Yahuwah, thus says Yahuwah the Almighty, Your house is laid waste, I shall cast you out as the wind does stubble, and your children shall not be fruitful. For they have despised my command, and done that which is evil before me. I shall give your houses to a people that shall come, who having not yet heard of me, shall believe me, to whom I have shown no signs, yet they shall do what I have commanded them. They have seen no prophets, yet they call their sins to remembrance, and acknowledge them. I call to witness the favor of the people to come, whose little ones rejoice in gladness, and though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in Ruach they believe the word that I say. And now, brother, see what is steam, and see the people that come from the east, to whom I shall give for leaders Abraham, Yishak, and Yaakov, Usha, Amos, and Mika, Yoal, Obadiahu, and Yoni, Naam, and Habakkuk, Sephaniahu, Haggai, Zechariahu, and Malachi, who was also called a messenger of Yahuwah. Thus says Yahuwah, I brought this people out of bondage, and I gave them my commands by my servants the prophets, whom they would not hear, but despise my counsels. The mother that bore them says to them, Go your way, you children. For I am a widow and forsaken. I brought you up with gladness, but with sorrow and heaviness I have lost you. For you have sinned before Yahuwah your Elua, and done that which is evil before him. But what shall I now do for you? I am a widow and forsaken. Go your way, O my children, and ask kindness from Yahuwah. As for me, O oh Father, I call upon you for a witness over the mother of these children, who would not guard my covenant, that you bring them to confusion, and their mother to ruin, that there may be no offspring from them. Let them be scattered abroad among the Gentiles. Let their names be blotted out from the earth, for they have despised my covenant. Woe to you, Asher! You that hide the unrighteous within you. Oh, you wicked people. Remember what I did to Sodom and Gomorrah, whose land lies in lumps of tar and piles of ashes. Even so, I shall do the same to those who do not listen to me, says Yahuwah the Almighty. Thus says Yahuwah to Ezra, Tell my people that I shall give them the reign of Jerusalem, which I would have given to Yasharal, I shall also take their esteem to myself and give others the everlasting dwellings which I have prepared for them. They shall have the tree of life for an ointment of sweet savory. They shall neither labor nor be weary. Go, and you shall receive. Pray that your days are few, that they may be short. The rain is already prepared for you. Watch. Call the Shamayim in earth to witness. For I have broken the evil in pieces, and created the good. For I live, says Yahuwah, Mother, embrace your children, and bring them up with gladness. Make their feet as steady as a pillar. For I have chosen you, says Yahuwah, and those who are dead I shall raise up again from their places and bring them out of the graves. For I have acknowledged my name in Yasharal. Do not fear, you mother of the children. For I have chosen you, says Yahuwah. For your help I shall send my servants, Yashayahu and Yermiyahu, after whose counsel I have kadosh, and prepared for you twelve trees laden with different fruits, and as many fountains flowing with milk and honey, and seven mighty mountains, 
on which there grows roses and lilies, whereby I shall fill your children with joy. Do right to the widow, judge for the fatherless, give to the poor, defend the orphan, clothe the naked, heal the broken and the weak. Do not mock a lame man, defend the crippled, and let the blind man come into the sight of my brightness. Guard the old and young within your walls. Wherever you find the dead, take them and bury them, and I shall give you the first place in my resurrection. Remain, O my people, and take your rest, for your rest is still to come. Nourish your children, O you good nurse, establish their feet. As for the servants whom I have given you, not one of them shall perish, for I shall require them from among your number. Do not be weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness comes, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but you shall be joyful and have abundance. The Gentiles shall envy you, but they shall be able to do not against you, says Yahuwah. My hand shall cover you, so that your children shall not see Sheol. Be joyful, O oh, you mother, with your children, for I shall deliver you, says Yahuwah. Remember your children who sleep, for I shall bring them out from the breath of the earth, and show kindness to them, for I am kind, says Yahuwah Almighty. Embrace your children until I come, and show kindness to them, for my wells run over, and my favor does not fail. I, Ezra, received a command from Yahuwah on my horror that I should go to Yasharal, but when I came to them, they disregarded and despised the command of Yahuwah. And therefore I say unto you, O you Gentiles that hear and understand, look for your shepherd. He shall give you everlasting rest, for he is near at hand, who shall come at the end of the world. Be ready for the reward of the rain, for the everlasting lights shall shine upon you forever. Flee the shadow of this world. Receive the joy of your esteem. I witness of my Savior openly. O oh, receive the gift that is given you, and be glad, giving thanks to he who has led you to the reign of the Shamayim. Arise and stand. See the number of those who are sealed at the feast of Yahuwah, who have departed from the shadow of this world, and have received garments of esteem from Yahuwah. Take a number, O Sion, and enclose those in you who are clothed in white, who have filled the law of Yahuwah. The number of your children, whom you long for is filled. Plead the power of Yahuwah, that your people, who have been called from the beginning, may be Kadosh. I, Ezra, saw upon Mount Sion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised Yahuwah with songs. And in the midst of them there was a young man of tall stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads he placed crowns, and was more exalted than which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the messenger and said, Master, who are these? He answered and said to me, These are those who have put off the mortal garments, and put on the immortal, and have confessed the name of the Lord. Now they are crowned and receive palms. Then I said to the messenger, What young man is this who crowns them and gives them palms in their hands? So he answered and said to me, It is the band of Alu, whom they have confessed in the world. Then I began to greatly commend those who stood so steadfastly for the name of Yahuwah. Then the messenger said to me, Go your way. And tell my people how great and how many are the wonders of Yahuwah, your Lord, which you have seen.
in the 30th year after the ruin of the city. I was in Babel and lay troubled upon my bed and my thoughts overwhelmed my heart. For I saw the desolation of Sion and the wealth of those who dwelt in Babel. And my Ruach was greatly moved so that I began to speak words full of reverence to the Most High and said, O oh, Yahuwah who reigns, you spoke in the beginning when you established the earth and by you alone and commanded the dust and gave it body to Adam without being which was the workmanship of your hands and breathed into him the breath of life and he was made living before you and you led him into paradise which your right hand had planted before the earth ever appeared and you gave a command to him to love your way which he transgressed and immediately you appointed death in him and his generations from whom came nations tribes people and clans without number and all people walked after their own desire and acted arrogantly before you and despised your commands and again it came to be you brought the flood upon those who dwelt on the earth and destroyed them and it came to be in each of them that as death was to Adam so was the flood to these nevertheless you left one of them namely Noah with his household from whom came all righteous men and it came to be that when those who dwelt upon the earth began to multiply and had brought forth many children and were a great people they began again to be more wicked than the first now when they lived so wickedly before you you chose a man from among them whose name was Abraham you loved him and you showed your desire to him alone and made an everlasting covenant with him promising to him that you would never forsake his seed and to him you gave Yitzhak and to Yitzhak you also gave Yaakov and Esau as for Yaakov you chose him for yourself and put Esau aside and so Yaakov became a great multitude and it came to be that when you led his seed out of Mitzrayim you brought them up to Mount Sinai and bowing to Shamayim you established the earth moved the whole world and made the depths to tremble and troubled the men at that time and your esteem passed through four gates of fire and of earthquake and of wind and of cold that you might give the law to the seed of Yaakov and commandments to the generation of Yasharal and yet you did not take away from them a wicked heart that your law might bring forth fruit in them for the first Adam bearing a wicked heart transgressed and was overcome and so are all those who are descended from him the sickness was made permanent and the law in the heart of the people with the evil root so that the good departed and the evil still stayed so the days passed and the years were brought to an end then you raised up a servant named Dawid whom you commanded to build a city for your name and to offer incense and offerings to you within it when this was done many years then those who inhabited the city forsook you and acted in all manner even as Adam and all his generations had done for they also had a wicked heart and so you gave your city over into the hands of your enemies are their deeds then any better who inhabit Babel that they should therefore have the reign over Sion for when I came there and had seen unrighteousnesses without number and my being saw many evildoers in these 30 years so that my heart failed me for I have seen how you endure those sinning and have spared evildoers and have destroyed your people and have preserved your enemies and have not declared it I do not remember how to depart from this way are those of Babel then better than those of Sion or is there any other people that knows you besides Yasharal? Or what generation has believed your covenant so much as Yaakov? And yet their reward does not appear, and their labor has no fruit. For I have gone here and there among the Gentiles, and I see that they overflow in wealth, and do not think upon your commands. Now therefore weigh our wickedness in the balance, 
and also theirs who dwell on the earth. And so shall your name be found nowhere but in Yasharal. But when was it that those who dwell on the earth have not sinned in your sight? Of what people have so kept your commands? You shall find that Yasharal by name has kept your orders, but not the Gentiles. And the Malik that was sent to me, whose name was Uriah, answered me and said, Your heart has gone too far regarding this world, and do you think to understand the way of the Most High? Then I said, Yes, Master. And he answered me and said, I have been sent to show you three ways, and to put forth three situations before you, of which if you declare to me one, I shall also show you the way that you desire to see, and I shall show you from where the wicked heart comes. And I said, Speak on, my master. Then he said to me, Go your way, weigh the weight of fire, or measure the blast of the wind, or recall the day that is past. Then I answered and said, What man is able to do this, that you should ask such matters of me? And he said to me, if I should ask you how many dwellings are in the midst of the sea, or how many springs are in the source of the deep, or how many fountains are above the expanse, or which are the exits of Sheol, or the entrances of paradise? However, you might say to me, I have never went down into the deep, neither as yet into Sheol, nor did I ever climb up into the Shamaim. Nevertheless, I have only asked you of the fire and wind, and of the day through which you have passed, and of that from which you cannot be separated. And yet, you give me no answer to them. He said further to me, That which is your own, and which you have grown up with, you cannot know. How then should your mind be able to know the way of the Most High? And the world being now outwardly corrupted, to understand the corruption that is clearly in my sight, then I said to him, It would be better that we were not at all than that we should still live in wickedness and to suffer and not to know why. He answered me and said, I went into a forest, into a plain, and the trees took counsel and said, Come, let us go and fight against the sea that it may depart before us and that we may make more forests. The floods of the sea also similarly took counsel and said, Come, let us go up and subdue the forests of the plain, that there also we may make ourselves more territory. The plan of the forest was in vain, for the fire came and consumed it. The plan of the floods of the sea came likewise to naught, for the sand stood up and stopped them. If you were to judge now between these two, whom would you begin to declare right, or whom would you condemn? I answered and said, Truly, it is a foolish thought that they have both devised, for the ground is given to the forest, and the sea also has its place to hold its floods. Then he answered me and said, You have given the right judgment, but why do you not judge yourself also? For as the ground is given to the forest, and the sea to its floods, even so, those who dwell on the earth may understand not but that which is on the earth. And he who dwells above the Shamaim may only understand that which is above the heights of the Shamaim. Then I answered and said, Please, Yahuwah, let me have understanding. For it was not my thought to be curious of the ways above, but of such that passed by us daily, namely, why Yasharal was given up as a reproach to the Gentiles, and for what cause the people whom you have loved are given over to wicked nations. And why the law of our forefathers is brought to naught, and the written covenant is nullified. And we pass away out of the world as grasshoppers, and our life is astonishment and fear, and we are not worthy to obtain kindness. What shall he then do for his name by which we are called? Of these matters I have asked. Then he answered me and said, The more you search, the more you shall marvel, for the world hastens to pass away and cannot understand that which is promised to the righteous in time to come. But this world is full of unrighteousness and sickness. But concerning that of which you ask me, I shall tell you, for the evil is sown, 
but its destruction has not yet come. If therefore that which is sown is not removed, and if the place where the evil is sown is not turned over, then it cannot become sown with good. For the grain of evil seed has been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning, and how much wickedness has it produced to this time? And how much shall it yet bring forth until the time of threshing comes? Consider now for yourself, what great fruits of wickedness the grain of evil seed has brought forth. And when the heads are cut down, which are without number, how great a floor they shall be! Then I answered and said, How, and when shall these come to pass? Why are our years few and evil? And he answered me, saying, Do not hasten more than the Most High, for it is worthless for your haste to be more than his, for you have already exceeded. Did not the beings of the righteous also ask question of these in their wombs, saying, How long shall I have expectancy in this way? When does the reward of our harvest come? And to these your real, the chief Malik, answered them, and said, When the number of seeds have been filled in you, for he has weighed the world in the balance. By measure he has measured the times, and by number he has numbered the times, and he does not move nor stir them until the said measure is filled. Then I answered and said, O oh, Yahuwah who reigns, we are all full of unrighteousness. And possibly it is for our sake that the floors of the righteous are not filled, because of the sins of those who dwell on the earth. So he answered me and said, Go your way to a woman with child, and ask her when she has completed her nine months, if her womb may keep the birth any longer within her. Then I said, No, master, she cannot. And he said to me, The rooms of beings in the grave are like the womb of a woman. For as a woman in childbirth hastens to escape the necessity of the childbirth, even so do these places hasten to deliver those who are entrusted to them. From the beginning, look, what you desire to see, it shall be shown you. Then I answered and said, If I have found favor in your sight, and if it is possible, and if I am able, show me then whether there is more to come than is past, or more past than is to come. What is past I know, but what is to come I do not know. And he answered me, Stand on the right, and I shall explain the parable to you. So I stood and looked, and see, a hot burning torch passed before me. And it came to me that in the flame that passed I looked, and see, the smoke still remained. After this there passed before me a watery cloud, and sent down much rain with a storm. And when the stormy rain had passed, the drop still remained. Then he said to me, Consider for yourself, as the rain is more than the drops, and as the fire is greater than the smoke, so the quantity which is passed is greater, but the drops and the smoke remained. Then I prayed and said, Do you think I shall live until that time, or what shall come to be in those days? He answered me and said, as for the signs of which you ask me, I may tell you of them in part, but regarding your life, I am not sent to show you, for I do not know it. But regarding the signs, see, the day shall come, that those who dwell upon earth shall be taken in a great number, and the way of truth shall be hidden, and the land shall be barren of belief. But wickedness shall be increased above that which you now see, or that you have heard long ago, and the land which you now see to have a root, you shall see suddenly laid waste. But if the Most High grants you to live, you shall see after the third trumpet that the sun shall suddenly shine again in the night, 
in the third of the moon in that day. And blood shall drip from wood, and the stone shall give its cry, and the people shall be troubled, and one shall rule, whom those who dwell upon the earth do not expect. And the birds shall take flight away together, and the sea of Sodom shall throw out fish, and make a noise in the night, which many have not known, but they shall all hear the sound of it. There shall also be confusion in many places, and the fire shall be often sent out again, and the wild beasts shall change their places, and women during uncleanness shall bring forth monsters, and salt water shall be found with the sweet, and all friends shall destroy one another. The knowledge shall hide itself, and understanding will draw itself into its secret room, and shall be sought by many, and yet not be found. Then unrighteousness and lack of self-control shall be multiplied on earth. One land shall ask another and say, Has righteousness that makes a man righteous passed through you? And it shall say, No. At the same time men shall have expectancy, but do not obtain it. They shall labor, but their ways shall not prosper. To show you such signs I have permission, and if you pray again, and weep as now, and fast seven days, you shall yet hear greater matters. Then I woke, and an extreme fear went through my entire body, and my mind was so troubled that I fainted. So the messenger that had come to talk with me held me, comforted me, and stood me up on my feet. And on the second night it came to be, that Shealtiel, the leader of the people, came to me, saying, where have you been, and why is your countenance so heavy? Do you not know that Yasharal is entrusted to you in the land of their captivity? Rise, therefore, and eat bread, and do not forsake us, as the shepherd that leaves his flock in the hands of cruel wolves. Then I said to him, Go away from me, and do not come near me. And he heard what I said, and went from me. And so I fasted seven days, mourning and weeping, as Uriah the Molly commanded me. And after seven days it came to be, that the thoughts of my heart were very grievous to me again, and my being recovered the Ruach of understanding. And I began to speak with the Most High again, and said, O oh, Yahuwah who reigns over every forest of the earth, and all the trees in it, you have chosen your one and only vine, and of all lands of the whole earth, you have chosen your one cistern, and of all the flowers of it, one lily. And of all the depths of the sea, you have filled your one river, and of all cities built, you have kadosh Sion unto yourself. And of all the birds that are created, you have named your one dove. And of all the beasts that are made, you have supplied your one sheep. And among all the multitudes of people, you have chosen your one people. And unto this people, whom you loved, you gave a law that is acceptable for all. And now, O Yahuwah, why have you given this one people over to many? And upon the one roots you have prepared others? And why have you scattered your one and only people among many? And those who denied your promises, and did not believe your covenants, have trodden them down. If you hated your people so much, should you punish them with your own hands? Now when I had spoken these words, the messenger that came to me the night before was sent to me, and said to me, Hear me, and I shall instruct you. Listen to the word that I speak, and I shall tell you more. And I said, Speak on, master. Then he said to me, You are greatly troubled in heart for the sake of Yasharal. Do you love that people more than he who made them? And I said, No, master, but a very grief I have spoken. For my kidneys pain me every hour, while I labor to understand the way of the Most High, and to seek out part of his right ruling. And he said to me, you cannot. And I said, Why, Master? For what was I born then? 
But why was my mother's womb not my grave? That I might not have seen the trouble of y'all cold and the wearisome toil of the race of y'all Sharal. And he said to me, Number for me that which has not yet come. Gather together for me the drops that are scattered abroad. Make the flowers that are withered green again. Open for me the places that are closed. And bring forth for me the winds that in them are shut up. Show me the image of its voice. And then I shall declare to you that which you labor to know. And I said, O oh, Yahuwah who reigns, who may know these, but he whose dwelling is not with men. As for me, I am unwise. How may I then speak of these matters of which you ask me? Then he said to me, As you are unable to do any of these that I have spoken of, even so you cannot find out my judgment or the love in the end that I have promised to my people. And I said, See, O oh, Yahuwah, you are still near to those who are reserved till the end. But what shall they do who have been before me? Or we who are here now? Or those who shall come after us? And he said to me, I shall liken my judgment to a circle, as there is no slackness for the last. Even so, there is no swiftness for the first. So I answered and said, Could you not make those who have been made, and are now, and who are to come, at once, that you might show your judgment sooner? Then he answered me and said, The creature cannot hasten more than the maker, neither could the world hold at once those who shall be created within it. And I said, As you have said to your servant, that you, who gives life to all, had given life at once to the creatures that you have created, and the creation bore it. Even so, it might also bear those who are now present at once. And he said to me, Ask the womb of a woman, and say to her, If you bring forth children, why do not do them all together, but one after another? Ask her therefore to bring forth ten children at once. And I said, She cannot, but must do it over a span of time. Then he said to me, even so have I given the womb of the earth to those who are sown in it in their times. For as a young child cannot bring forth those that belong to the aged, even so have I subjected the world which I created. And I asked and said, Seeing you have not given me an occasion, I shall proceed to speak before you. For our mother, of whom you have told me that she is young, now draws near to age. He answered me and said, Ask a woman that bears children, and she shall tell you. Say to her, Why are those whom you have now brought forth like those who were before, but smaller in size? And she shall answer you, Those who are born in the strength of youth are of one form, and those who are born in the time of age, when the womb fails, are otherwise. Consider yourself also, therefore, how you are less of stature than those who were before you, and so are those who come after you lesser than you. As the creation which now begins to age, and has passed over the strength of you. Then I said, Please, Yahuwah, if I have found favor in your sight, show your servant by whom you visit your creation. And he said to me, In the beginning, when the earth was made, before the borders of the world stood, or the winds ever blew, before it thundered and lightning struck, or before the foundations of paradise were laid, before the lovely flowers were seen, or ever the movable powers were established, before the innumerable multitude of Malachim were gathered together, or before the heights of the Shamayim were lifted up, before the measures of the expanse were named, or before the footstool of Sion was established, and before the present years were sought out, and before the deeds of those who now sin were turned, before those who have gathered belief for a treasure were sealed, then I considered these, and they all were made through me alone, and through none other. By me they shall also be ended, and by none other. Then I answered and said, What shall be the dividing of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first? in the beginning of that which follows? 
And he said to me, From Abraham to Yishak, when Yaakov and Esau were born to him, Yaakov's hand first held the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Yaakov is the beginning of that which follows. The hand of man is between the heel and the hand. Other questions, Ezra, do not ask. Then I answered and said, O oh, Yahuwah who reigns, if I have found favor in your sight, please show your servant the end of your signs, of which you showed me in part the last night. So he answered and said to me, Stand up on your feet and hear a mighty sounding voice, and there shall be a great shaking, but the place where you stand shall not be moved. And so, when it sounds, do not be afraid. For the word is of the end, and the foundation of the earth understands. And why? Because the sound of these trembles and is moved, for it knows that the end of these must be changed. And it came to be, that when I heard it, I stood up on my feet, and listened, and see, there was a voice that spoke, and the sound of it was like the sound of many waters. And it said, See, Days come that I shall begin to draw near and to visit those who dwell on the earth and shall begin to make inquiry of them for harm they have done unrighteously with their wickedness and when the affliction of Sion shall be complete and when the world that shall begin to vanish away is finished then I shall show these signs the book shall be open before the expanse and they all shall see together. And children a year old shall speak with their voices. The women with child shall bring forth children prematurely of three or four months old. And they shall live and be raised up. And suddenly the sown places shall appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. And the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man hears, they shall be suddenly afraid. At that time, friends shall fight against one another as enemies, and the earth shall stand in fear with those who dwell in it. The springs of the fountain shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not flow. Whoever remains from all these that I have told you shall escape, and see my deliverance and the end of your world. And those who are received shall see it, who have not tasted death from their birth, and the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed, and turned into another Ruach. The evil shall be blotted out, and deception shall be quenched. As for belief, it shall flourish, corruption shall be overcome, and the truth, which has been so long without fruit, shall be declared. And when he talked with me, see, I looked little by little upon him before whom I stood. And these words he said to me, I have come to show you the time of the night to come. If you pray further and fast seven days again, I shall tell you greater matters by day than you have heard. Your voice is heard before the Most High, for the Almighty has seen your righteous dealing. He has also seen your blamelessness, which you have had since your youth. And therefore he has sent me to show you all these, and to say to you, Take courage, and do not fear me. And do not hasten to think worthlessly about the past times, so that you do not hasten from the latter times. And it came to be after this, that I wept again, and fasted seven days in a similar manner, that I might complete the three weeks which he told me. And on the eighth night my heart was tortured within me again, and I began to speak before the Most High. For my rock burned greatly, and my being was in distress. And I said, O oh, Yahuwah, you spoke from the beginning of the creation, even the first day, and said, Let the Shamayim and earth be made. And your word became a perfect work, and then the Ruach and darkness and silence were on every side. The sound of man's voice was not yet formed, then you commanded a good light to come forth from your treasures, that your work might appear. 
On the second day, you created the breath of the expanse and commanded it to the bottom and to make a division between the waters. That one part would go up and the other remain beneath. On the third day, you commanded the waters to be gathered into a seven part of the earth. Six parts you dropped up and kept them in order that some of these be implanted by Alua until my serve you. For as soon as your word went forth, the work was made. For immediately there was great and innumerable fruit, and many and very pleasures for the taste, and flowers of unchangeable color, and fragrances of wonderful smell, and these were created the third day. On the fourth day you commanded that the sun should shine, and the moon give its light, and the stars should be in order, and commanded them to do service to man who was to be made. On the fifth day, you spoke to the seven parts where the waters were gathered, that it should bring forth living creatures, birds, and fish, and so it came to be. For the silent, lifeless water brought forth living creatures at the command of Alu, that all people might praise your wondrous works. Then you appointed two living creatures, the one you called Behemoth, and the other Leviathan separated the one from the other for the seventh part namely where the water was gathered together would not hold them both on to behemoth you gave one part which was dried up the third day that it should dwell in the same part in which are a thousand hills but to leviathan you gave the seventh part that is the waters and have kept it to be consumed by whom you want and when On the sixth day, you gave command to the earth that it should bring forth beasts, cattle, and creeping creatures before you. And after these, Adam also, whom you made master of all your creatures. From him we have all come, and also the people whom you have chosen. All this have I spoken before you, O Yahuwah, because you made the world for our sakes. As for the other people, who also come from Adam, you have said that they are nothing, but are as spittle, and have likened the abundance of them to a drop that falls from a vessel. And now, O oh Yahuwah, see, these Gentiles, who have always been regarded as nothing, have begun to be masters over us, and to consume us. But we, your people, whom you have called your firstborn, your only brought forth, and your dearly beloved, are given into their hands. If the world is now made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? And when I had finished speaking these words, the messenger who had been sent to me the nights before was sent to me. And he said to me, Rise, Ezra, and hear the words that I have come to tell you. And I said, Speak on, my master. And he said to me, The sea is put in a wild place, that it might be deep and great. But if it were that the entrance were narrow and like a river, who then could go into the sea to look upon it? and to navigate it. If he did not go through the narrow, how could he come into the wide? There is also another example. A city is built and put on a broad field and is filled with all good. Its entrance is narrow and is put in a dangerous place to fall. So there is a fire on the right hand and a deep moat on the left and only one path between them both, even between the fire and the water so narrow that only one man could go through at once. If this city were now given to a man as an inheritance, if he should never pass the danger place before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? And I said, It is so, Master. 
Then he said to me, So also is Joshua's portion, because for their sakes I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my laws, then what is now done was established. Then the entrances of this world were made narrow, full of sorrow and hardships. They are but few and evil, full of dangers and very laborsome. For the entrances of the greater world were wide and sure, and brought forth incorruptible fruit. If then those who live do not strive to go through these distresses and futilities, they shall never receive that which is laid up for them. Now therefore, why do you worry yourself, seeing you are but a corruptible man? And why are you disturbed, for you are only mortal? Why have you not considered in your heart that which is to come, rather than that which is present? Then I answered and said, O Yahuwah who reigns, you have ordained in your law that the righteous should inherit these, but that the wicked should perish. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer distresses, but have expectancy for the expanse. Yet those who have done wickedly have suffered the distresses, but shall not see the expanse. And he said to me, There is no judge above the Lord, and none that has understanding above the Most High. But there are many who perish in this life, because they despise the law of the Lord that is put before them. For the Lord has given a strict command to those who came, what they should do to live, even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. Nevertheless, they were not obedient to him, but spoke against him and plotted in vain, and deceived themselves by their wicked deeds, and said of the Most High that he did not exist and did not know his ways. But they have despised his Torah and denied his covenants. They have not been trustworthy in his laws and have not performed his works. And therefore, Ezra, emptiness is for the empty and fullness is for the fool. See, the time shall come that these signs which I have told you shall come to pass and the bride shall appear and her coming forth shall be seen which now is withheld from the earth. And whoever is delivered from these evils spoken of shall see my wonders. For my bond, Yahushua, shall be revealed with those who are with him, and those who remain shall rejoice within four hundred years. After these years, Hamashiach, my bond, shall die, and all men who have life. And the world shall be turned into the silence of old seven days, as in the former judgments, so that no one remains. And after seven days, the world that is not yet awake shall be raised up, and that which is corrupt shall die. And the earth shall restore those who are asleep within, and the dust and the secret places shall deliver those who dwell in silence, and those beings who were given to them. And the Most High shall appear upon the seat of judgment, and anguish shall pass away, and patience shall come to an end. But only judgment shall remain, Truth shall stand, and belief shall grow strong, and the work shall follow, and the reward shall be revealed, and the good deeds shall be firm, and wicked deeds shall not reign. The pit of torture shall appear, and opposite shall be the place of rest, and the furnace of gave known shall be uncovered, and the paradise of the light opposite. Then the Most High shall say to the nations that have been raised from the dead, See, Know whom you have denied, whom you have not served, whose commands you have despised. Look on this side and that. Here is delight and rest, and there are fire and torture. So he shall speak to them on the day of judgment, the day that has no sun, or moon, or stars, or cloud, or thunder, or lightning, or wind, or water, or air or darkness, or evening, or morning, or summer, or spring, or heat, or winter, or frost, or cold, or hail, or rain, or dew, or noon, or night, or dawn, or shining, or bright light, but only the splendor of the esteem of the Most High, by which all shall see what has been appointed. It shall last as if for a week of years. This is my judgment in this appointed order, and to you alone have I shown these.
and I answered and said, Oh, Yahuwah, who reigns? I said then and say now, Baruch are those who are alive and guard your commandments. But what of those for whom I prayed? For who among the living has not sinned? Or who is there among mortal men that has not transgressed your covenant? And now I see that the world to come shall bring the light to few, but torture to many. For an evil heart has grown up within us which has separated us from Elul, and has brought us into corruption in the ways of death, and has shown us the paths of destruction, and removed us far from life. And not only a few, but for almost all who have been created. And he answered me and said, Listen to me, Ezra, and I shall teach you, and shall admonish you once more. For this reason the Most High has not made one world but two. Because you have said that the righteous are few, while the wicked are many, hear the explanation for this. If you have only a few precious stones, would you add lead and clay to them? And I said, Master, how could this be? And he said to me, Not only this, but ask the earth and it shall tell you. Submit to it and it shall declare to you. And say to it, You produce gold and silver and copper and also iron and lead and clay. But silver is more plentiful than gold and copper than silver and iron than copper and lead than iron and clay than lead. So judge which is more precious and desirable, that which is plentiful or that which is rare. And I said, O oh, Yahuwah who reigns, what is plentiful is of less value, for what is rare is more precious. And he answered me and said, Consider within yourself what you have thought. For the one who has what is hard to obtain rejoices more than the one who has what is plentiful. So also shall be the judgment that I have promised. For I shall rejoice over the few who are saved, because it is they who have made my esteem prevail. And through them my name has been esteemed. I shall not grieve over the great number of those who perish, for they are like mist, and are similar to a flame and smoke. They are lit on fire and burn with heat, and are extinguished. And I replied and said, O oh, earth, what have you brought forth? If the mind is made out of dust like the other creations, for it would have been better if the dust itself had not been brought forth, so that the mind might not have been made from it. But now the mind grows with us, and therefore we are tortured, because we perish and we know it. Let mankind lament, but let the beasts of the field be glad. Let all who have been born lament, but let the cattle and flocks rejoice. It is much better for them than for us, for they do not look to a judgment, and they do not know of any torture or deliverance promised to them after death. What does it profit us if our life is preserved, but we are cruelly tortured? For all who are born are entangled in wickedness, and are full of sins and burdened with transgressions. And if we are not to come into judgment after death, perhaps it would have been better for us. And he answered me and said, when the Most High made the world, and Adam, and all who have come from him, he first prepared the judgment, and that which pertains to the judgment. But now, know from your own words, for you have said that the mind grows with us. For this reason, therefore, those who live on earth shall be tortured. For though they had knowledge, they committed wickedness. And although they received the commandments, they did not guard them. And though they obtained the law, they dealt untrustworthily with what they had received. What then shall they have to say in the judgment? Or how shall they answer in the last days? How long the Most High have been patient with the inhabitants of the world, and not for their sakes, but because of the days that He has ordained. And I answered and said, If I have found favor in your eyes, O Yehu, show this also to your servant, whether after death, as soon as every one of us breathes their last, we shall be kept in rest until those days come when you shall renew the creation, or whether we shall be tortured immediately. And he answered me and said, I shall show you this also, but do not include yourself with those who have mocked, or number yourself among those who are tortured, for you have a treasure of work stored up with the Most High, 
but it shall not be shown to you till the last days. And concerning death, the teaching is, when the decisive decree goes forth from the Most High, that one shall die, as the Ruach leads the body to return him again who gave it. First of all, it adores the esteem of the Most High. If it is one of those who have mocked, and has not guarded the way of the Most High, who has despised his law, and hated those who revere Lul, such Ruachot do not enter into dwellings, but shall immediately wander in torture, forever in grief and sorrow in seven ways. The first way, because they have mocked the law of the Most High. The second way, because they cannot make a good repentance so that they now may live. The third way, they shall see the reward laid up for those who have trusted the covenants of the Most High. The fourth way, they shall consider the torture laid up for themselves in the last days. The fifth way, they shall see how the dwellings of the others are guarded by Malachim in deep breast. The sixth way, they shall see how some of them pass over into torture. The seventh way, which is greater than all the ways that have been spoken, because they shall utterly waste away in confusion and be consumed with shame and shall wither with fear at seeing the esteem of the Most High, in whose presence they sinned while they were alive, and in whose presence they are to be judged in the last days. And this is the order for those who have guarded the ways of the Most High, when they are separated from their mortal body. During the time that they lived in it, they labored to serve the Most High, and withstood danger every hour so they might guard the law of the lawgiver perfectly. Therefore, this is the teaching concerning them. First, they shall see with great joy the esteem of he who receives him, that they shall have rest in seven orders. The first order, because they strove with great effort to overcome the wicked thought that was formed with them, so that it might not lead them astray from life unto death. The second order, because they see the confusion in which the beings of the unrighteous wander and the punishment that awaits them. The third order, they see the witness that he who formed them bears concerning them, that throughout their life they guarded the law with which they were entrusted. The fourth order, they know the rest that they now enjoy, being gathered into their rooms and guarded by Malachim in deep rest, and the esteem waiting for them in the last days. The fifth order, they rejoice that they now escaped what is corruptible and shall inherit what is to come. And they also see the difficulty and toil from which they have been delivered and the spacious freedom that they are to receive and enjoy in immortality. The sixth order, when it is shown them how their face is to shine like the sun and how they are to be made like the light of the stars, being incorruptible from then on. The seventh order, which is greater than all that have been spoken, but they shall rejoice with boldness, and shall be confident without confusion, and shall be glad without fear. For they press forward to see the face of he whom they served in life, and from whom they are to receive their reward when esteemed. This is the order of the beings of the righteous, which from now on is announced. And the previously spoken are the ways of torture, that those who would not pay heed shall suffer from now on. Then I answered and said, Shall there be time given to the beings after they have been separated from the bodies to see what you have described to me? And he said to me, They shall have freedom for seven days, so that during these seven days they may see that of which you have been told. And afterwards they shall be gathered into their dwellings. And I answered and said, if I found favor in your eyes, show further to me, your servant, whether on the day of judgment the righteous shall be able to intercede for the unrighteous, or to entreat the most high for them, fathers for sons, or sons for parents, brothers for brothers, relatives for their relatives, or friends for those who are most dear. And he answered me and said, Since you have found favor in my eyes, I shall show you this also. The day of judgment is certain and displays to all the sign of truth. Just as now a father does not send his son, or a son his father, or a master his servant, 
or a friend his dearest friend to be sick or sleep or eat or be healed in his place so no one shall ever pray for another on that day neither shall anyone lay a burden on another but then all shall bear their own righteousness and unrighteousness then I said Abraham prayed first for the Sodomites and Moshe for the fathers that sinned in the wilderness and Yahushua after him for Yacharal in the time of Akan and Shemiyal and Dawid for the destruction and Shaloma for those who will come to the temple and Aliyahu for those who received rain and for the dead that he might live and Hiskiyahu for the people in the time of Sanherib and many for many even so now seeing corruption has grown and wickedness increased and the righteous have prayed for the wicked why shall it also not be so now he answered me and said this present life is not the end where much esteem dwells therefore they have prayed for the weak but the day of judgment shall be the end of this age in the beginning of the immortality to come in which corruption is past lack of self-control is at an end Horn is cut off, righteousness groans, and truth springs forth. Then no man shall be able to save he who is destroyed, nor to oppress he who has overcome. Then I answered and said, This is my first and last saying, that it would have been better to not have given the earth to Adam, or else, when it was given him, to have restrained him from sinning. For what profit is there for men here in this present time to live in heaviness? and to look for punishment after death. Oh, you Adam, what have you done? For though it was you that sinned, you have not fallen alone, but all of us who come from you. For what does it profit us, if there is promised us an immortal time, whereas we have done the worst that bring death, or that there is an everlasting expectancy promised to us, whereas we being most wicked are made worthless, or that there are dwellings of healing and safety laid up for us, whereas we have lived wickedly, and that the esteem of the Most High is kept to defend those who have led a watchful life, whereas we have walked in the most wicked ways of all, and that there should be shown a paradise whose fruit endures forever, where there is safety and healing, since we shall not enter into it, for we have walked in crooked places, or that the faces of those who have practiced self-control shall shine above the stars, whereas our faces shall be blacker than darkness. For while we lived and committed wickedness, we did not consider that we should begin to suffer for it after death. Then he answered me and said, This is the condition of the battle, that man who was born upon the earth shall fight, that if he is overcome, he shall suffer as you have said. But if he overcomes, he shall receive that which I say. But this is the life of which Moses spoke to the people while he lived, saying, Choose life that you may live. Nevertheless, they did not believe him, nor even the prophets after him, nor myself who had spoken to them, that there should not be such grief in their destruction, as shall be the joy over those who are persuaded to salvation. Then I answered and said, I know, Master that the Most High is called kind, and that he has kindness upon those who have not yet come into the world, and upon those who also turn to his law, and that he is patient and endures those who have sinned as his creatures, and that he is generous, for he is ready to give where needed, and that he is of great kindness, for he multiplies more and more kindnesses to those who are present and are past, and also to those who are to come, for if he did not multiply his kindnesses, the world would not continue with those who inherit therein, and he pardons. For if he did not do so of his goodness, then those who have committed wickednesses were forgiven them. The ten thousand part of mankind would not remain living, and being judged, if he did not forgive those who are healed by his word, and blot out the great number of sins, there would likely be very few left in an innumerable crowd.
and he answered me, saying, The Most High has made this world for many, but the world to come for few. I shall tell you a parable, Ezra, just as when you ask the earth, it shall say to you that it gives much clay from which earthen vessels are made, but little dust from which gold comes. Even so is the course of this present world. There are many created, but few shall be saved. So I answered and said, O oh my being, swallow down understanding and devour wisdom, for you have come here against your desire, and against it you depart, for you no longer have but a short time to live. O oh, Yahoo, if you would allow your servant that we may pray before you, and you give us a seed to our heart, and tend to our understanding, that fruit may come from it. For how shall each man live who is corrupt, who bears the likeness of a man? For you are alone, and we are all one workmanship of your hands, as you have said. For when the body is formed in the mother's womb, and you give it members, your creation is preserved in fire and water. In nine months your workmanship endures your creation, which is created in her. But that which keeps and is kept shall both be preserved. And when the time comes, the womb delivers up that which grew in it. For you have commanded from the members of the body, that is, out of the breast, milk to be given, which is the fruit of the breast so that what has been formed may be nourished for a time till you lead it to your kindness you brought it up with your righteousness and instructed it in your law and instructed it with your right ruling and you shall put it to death as your creation and revive it as your work and therefore you destroy that which was formed with such great labor it is easy to be appointed by your command that which was made might be preserved. Now therefore, Yahuwah, I shall speak, regarding mankind in general, whom you know best, and regarding your people, for whose sake I'm grieved, and for your inheritance, for whose cause I mourn, and for Yasharal, for whom I'm burdened, and for Yaakov, for whose sake I'm troubled. Therefore I shall begin to pray before you for myself and for them, for I see the fall of we who dwell in the land, and I have heard the swiftness of the judgment to come. Therefore hear my voice, and understand my words, and I shall speak before you. This is the beginning of the words of Ezra, before he was taken up. And I said, O Yahuwah, you who dwells forever, who sees from above that which is in the Shamayim and in the air, whose throne is beyond measure, whose esteem cannot be contained, before whom the hosts of messengers stand with trembling, whose deeds are accompanied by wind and fire, whose word is true, and whose words are forever, whose command is strong and law reverent, whose look dried up the depths, and whose wrath makes the mountains melt away, which the truth witnesses, Oh, hear the prayer of your servant, and listen to the petition of your creation. For while I live, I shall speak, and so long as I have understanding, I shall answer. Oh, do not look upon the sins of your people, but on those who serve you in truth. Do not heed the wicked devices of the Gentiles, but the desire of those who guard your witnesses and afflictions. Do not think upon those who have walked falsely before you, but remember those who have known your reverence according to your desire. Let it not be your desire to destroy those who have lived like beasts, but to look upon those who have clearly taught your law. Do not be wroth with those who are deemed worse than beasts, but love those who always put their trust in your righteousness and esteem. For we, in our fathers, language to such sicknesses, but because of we sinners, you shall be called kind. But if you have a desire to show favor upon us, you shall be called kind, namely by us, who have no works of righteousness. For the righteous, who have many good works laid up with you, shall receive a war for their own deeds. For what is mankind, that you should take displeasure in him? Or what is a corruptible generation, 
that you should be so bitter toward it. For in truth there is no man among them who is born, except he who has done wickedly. And among the trustworthy there is none who has not done wrong. For in this, O Yahuwah, your righteousness and your goodness shall be declared. If you are kind to those who do not have the trust of good works. Then he answered me and said, Some matters you have spoken rightly, and according to your words it shall be. For indeed, I shall not think upon the works of those who have sinned before death, before judgment, before destruction. But I shall rejoice over the works of the righteous, and I shall also remember their sojournings, and the deliverance, and the reward that they shall have. As I have spoken now, so it shall come to pass. For as the farmer sows much seed on the ground, and plants many trees, and yet that which is well sown in this season does not come up, neither does all that is planted take root. Even so, it is as those who are sown in the world, they shall not all be saved. I answered then and said, If I found favor, let me speak. As the farmer's seed perishes, if it does not come up, and does not receive your rain in due season, or if there is too much rain and ruins it, even so, mankind also perishes, who is formed of your hands, and is called your own likeness, because he is made like you, for whose sake you have made all, and like in him to be the farmer's seed. Do not be wroth with us, but spare your people, and show favor upon your own inheritance, for you are kind to your creation. Then he answered me, and said, that which is present is for the present, and that which is to come for what is to come. For you come far short that you should be able to love my creation more than I. But I have often drawn near to you and unto it, but never to the unrighteous. In this also you are praiseworthy before the Most High, in that you have humbled yourself as is proper and have not judged yourself worthy to be much esteemed among the righteous. For many great hardships shall come upon those who dwell in the world in the latter days, because they have walked in great pride. But understand for yourself, and seek out the esteem of those who are like you. For to you paradise is opened, the tree of life is planted, the time to come is prepared, abundance is made ready. A city is built, and rest is given, even perfect goodness and wisdom. The root of evil is sealed up from you, sickness and the moth is hidden from you, and corruption has fled into Sheol to be forgotten. Sorrows have passed, and in the end the treasure of immortality is shown. And therefore ask no more questions concerning the multitude of those who perish, but when they have received freedom. They despised the Most High, scorned his law, and forsook his ways. And they have trodden down his righteous ones, and said in their heart, There is no loot. And even knowing that they shall die, for that's that which is spoken of shall receive you. So thirst and anguish are prepared for them, for it was not his desire that men should come to naught. But those who are created have defiled the name of he who made them thankless to he who prepared life for them. And therefore my judgment is now at hand. I have not shown these matters to all men, but to you, and a few like you. Then I answered and said, See, O Yahuwah, now you have shown me the multitude of the wonders, which you shall begin to do in the last times, but you have not shown me at what time. Then he answered me and said, Measure the time diligently in itself, and when you see some of the signs past, which I have told you before, then you shall understand that it is the very same time wherein the Most High shall begin to avenge the world which he made. Therefore, when there are seen earthquakes, and the people of the world in uproar, 
then you shall understand well that the Most High spoke of those matters from the days that were before you, even from the beginning. For as all that is made in the world has a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest, so also the times of the Most High have clear beginnings in wonder and works of power, and endings in signs and wonders. And everyone that shall be saved, and shall be able to escape by his works, and by belief, by which you have believed, shall survive the danger spoken of, and shall see my deliverance in my land, and within my borders, for I have kadosed them for myself from the beginning. Then those who have abused my ways shall be in a wretched state, and those who have thrown them away in spite shall dwell in torture. For such have received benefits in their life, but have not known me. And those who have loathed my law, while they still have freedom. And when a place for repentance was still open to them, did not understand it, but despised it. The same must acknowledge it in anguish after death. And therefore, do not question how the wicked shall be punished, and when. But inquire how the righteous shall be delivered, to whom the world belongs, and for whom the world is created. Then I answered and said, I have said before, and now speak, and shall also speak it after, that there are many more of those who perish, than of those who shall be delivered, as a wave is greater than a drop. And he answered me, saying, As the field is, so is the seed also as are the flowers, such are the colors also. As the workman is, such is the work also. And as the farmer is himself, so is his harvest also. For it was the time for the world. And now when I prepared the world, which was not yet made, even for those to dwell within who now live, no man spoke against me, for then everyone obeyed. But now the way of those who are created in this world that is made are a corrupted seed forever and rid themselves of the law which is unsearchable. So I considered the world and see, there was danger because of the schemes that were brought into it. And I saw them and spared it greatly and have kept for myself a grape of the cluster and a plant of a great people. Let the multitude who perish then, who were brought forth in ruin, and let my grape be kept in my plant, for with great labor I have made it perfect. Nevertheless, if you shall wait yet seven more days, and you do not fast in them, but go into a field of flowers, where no house is built, and eat only the flowers of the field, taste no meat, drink no wine, but eat flowers only, and pray to the Most High continually, then I shall come and speak with you. So I went my way into the field, which is called our pad, as he commanded me. And I sat there among the flowers, and ate of the plants of the field, and the food they gave satisfied me. After seven days, I sat on the grass, and my heart was tortured within me, as before. And I opened my mouth, and began to speak before the Most High, and said, O oh, Yahuwah, you who showed yourself to us. You were shown to our fathers in the wilderness, in a place where no man treads, in a barren place, when they came out of Mitzrayim. And you spoke, saying, Hear me, O Yasharal, and guard my words, you see the Yaakov. For look, I sow my Torah in you, and it shall bear fruit in you, and you shall be esteemed in it forever. But our fathers, who received the Torah did not guard it and did not observe your laws and though the fruit of your Torah did not perish nor could it for it was yours yet those who received it perished because they did not guard that which was sown in them and see it is the manner when the ground has received seed or the sea a ship or any vessel food or drink that that in which it was sown or thrown into is perished that which was sown or thrown in or received also perishes and does not remain with us 
but with us it has not come to be. For we who have received the law perish by sin, and our hearts also which received it. However, the law does not perish, but remains in force. And when I spoke these matters in my heart, I looked back with my eyes, and on the right side I saw a woman. And see, she mourned and wept with a loud voice, and was very grieved in heart, and her garments were torn, and she had ashes upon her head. And I dismissed my thoughts that I was in, and I turned to her, and said to her, Why do you weep? Why are you so grieved in your heart? And she said to me, Master, leave me alone, that I may bewail myself and add to my sorrow. For I am very troubled in my heart, and brought very low. And I said to her, Tell me, what troubles you? She said to me, I, your servant, have been barren and had no child, though I had a husband thirty years. And those thirty years I did not day and night and every hour but make my prayer to the Most High. After thirty years, Alua heard me, your female servant, looked upon my misery, considered my trouble, and gave me a son. And I was very pleased with him as was my husband also, and all my neighbors, and we gave great esteem to the Almighty, and I provided for him with great struggles. So when he grew up and came to the time that he should have a wife, I made a feast. And it so came to be that when my son had entered into his wedding room, he fell down and died. Then we all put out the lamps, and all my neighbors rose up to comfort me. So I remained quiet to the evening of the second day. And it came to be, when they had all finished comforting me, so that I might be quiet, then I rose up by night and fled, and came here to this field as you see. And now I plan not to return to the city, but to stay here, and to neither eat nor drink but to continually mourn and fast until I die. Then I left the thoughts in which I was, and spoke to her in wrath, saying, You foolish woman above any other, do you not see our mourning and what comes upon us? For Sion, our mother, is full of all grief, and humble greatly, mourning bitterly. And now, seeing we all mourn and are sad, but we are all in grief, and you are greed for one son. For as to earth, and it shall tell you, that it is the one which ought to mourn for the fall of so many that grow upon it. For out of it came all in the beginning, and out of it shall all others come. And see, almost all of them walk to destruction, and a multitude of them shall be completely uprooted. Who then should make more mourning than it, which has lost so great a multitude? and not you, who are grieved but for one. But if you say to me, my lamentation is not like that of the earth, because I have lost the fruit of my womb, which I brought forth with pains, and bore with sorrows, but the earth not so, for the multitude present in it have gone as they came, according to the way of the earth. Then I say to you, as you have brought forth with labor, even so the earth has also given its fruit, namely man ever since the beginning to he who made it. Now therefore keep your sorrow to yourself, and bear that which has befallen you with good courage. For if you acknowledge the judgment of the Lord to be righteous, you shall both receive your son in time, and shall be praised among women. Go your way then into the city to your husband. And she said to me, That I shall not do, I shall not go into the city, but I shall die here. So I proceeded to speak further to her, and said, Do not do so, but let me give counsel. For how many are the adversities of Sion? Be comforted in regard to the sorrow of Jerusalem. For you see that our middash is laid waste, our altar broken down, our haycow destroyed, our harp is laid low, our song is put to silence, our rejoicing is at an end, the light of our lampstand is put out, 
The Ark of our Covenant is plundered. Our coldest objects are defiled. And our name that we are called by is almost profaned. Our children are put to shame. Our priests are burned. Our Levites have gone into captivity. Our maidens are defiled. And our wives ravished. Our righteous men carried away. Our little ones destroyed. Our young men are brought into bondage. And our strong men have become weak. And greatest of all, the seal of Sion has not lost its esteem. For it is delivered into the hands of those who hate us. And therefore shake off your great sadness. And put away the great number of sorrows. That the Almighty may be kind to you again. And the Most High shall give you rest and ease from your labor. And it came to be, while I was talking with her, see, her face suddenly shone exceedingly, and her face lit up, so that I was afraid of her, and wondered what it might be. And see, suddenly she made a very great fearful cry, so that the earth shook at the noise of the woman. And I looked, and see, the woman appeared to me no more, but there was a city built, and a large place revealed itself from the foundations. Then I was afraid, and cried with a loud voice, and said, Where is Uriel the messenger, who came to me in the beginning? For he has caused me to fall into many trances, for my end is turned into corruption, and my prayer to rebuke. And as I was speaking these words, see, he came to me, and looked upon me, and see, I lay as one dead, and my understanding was removed. And he took me by the right hand, and comforted me, and stood me on my feet, and said to me, What is the matter with you? And why are you so worried? And why is your understanding and the thoughts of your heart troubled? And I said, Because you have forsaken me, and yet I did according to your words. And I went into the field, and look, I have seen, and still see that which I am unable to express. And he said to me, Stand up like a man, and I shall advise you. Then I said, Speak on, my master. Only do not forsake me, lest I die lacking my expectancy. For I have seen what I did not know, and heard what I do not know. Or are my senses deceived, or is my being in a dream? Now therefore I plead that you reveal to your servant about this vision. Then he answered me and said, Listen to me. And I shall inform you, and tell you why you are afraid. For the Most High shall reveal many secrets to you. He has seen that your way is righteous, and that you grieve continually for your people, and make great lamentation for Sion. This, therefore, is the meaning of the vision which you recently saw. You saw a woman mourning, and you began to comfort her. But now you see the likeness of the woman no more. But a built city appeared to you, and whereas she told you of the death of her son, this is the interpretation. This woman, whom you saw, is Sion, and when she spoke to you, even she whom you see as a built city, but when she said to you that she had been barren thirty years, those are the thirty years in which there was no offering made in her. But after thirty years, Shaloma built this city and offered offerings, and then bore the barren a bond. And when she told you that she nourished him with labor, that was the dwelling in Jerusalem. But when she said to you, My bond coming into his marriage room had it fall and died, this was the destruction that came upon Jerusalem. And see, you saw her likeness, and because she mourned for her bond, you began to comfort her. And these matters which have taken place are to be opened on to you. For now the Most High sees that you are sincerely grieved, and suffer in your whole heart for her. So he has showed you the brightness of her esteem, and the comeliness of her loveliness. And therefore I ask that you remain in the field where no house was built. For I knew that the Most High would show this to you. Therefore I commanded you to go into the field, where no foundation of any building was, for no building of man is able to stand in a place where the Most High begins to show his city.
and therefore do not fear, nor let your heart be afraid, but go your way in, and see the loveliness and greatness of the building, as much as your eyes be able to see, and then you shall hear as much as your ears may comprehend. For you are Baruch above many others, and are called by the Most High, for so few are. But tomorrow at night you shall remain here, and the Most High shall show you visions of what is above, which the Most High shall do for those who dwell on the earth in the last days. So I slept that night, and the next, as he commanded me. Then I saw a dream, and see, an eagle came up from the sea, which had twelve feather wings and three heads. And I looked, and see, it spread its wings over all the earth, and all the winds of the air blew on it, and were gathered together. And I looked, and out of its wings grew other opposing wings, and they became little wings but smaller. And its heads were at rest. The head in the midst was greater than the others, yet it rested with the others. And I looked, and see, the eagle flew with his wings, and reigned on earth, and over those who dwelt in it. And I saw that all under the Shamayim were subject to it, and no man spoke against it, no, not one creature on earth. And I looked, and see, the eagle rose up on his talons, and spoke to his wings, saying, not watch all at once. Everyone sleep in his own place and watch in turn. But let the heads be reserved for the last. And I looked and see, the voice did not come out of his heads, but from the midst of his body. And I numbered its opposing wings. And see, there were eight of them. And I looked and see, on the right side there arose one wing and rained over all the earth. And so it was, that when it rained, its end came, and its place appeared no more. So the next following stood up and rained, and rained a long time. And it came to be, that when it rained, its end also came, as the first, so that it appeared no more. Then a voice came to it, and said, Listen, you who have ruled over the earth so long, I say this to you, before the time you are no longer seen, none after you shall attain to your time, neither to the half of it. Then a third arose, and reigned as the other before, and also appeared no more. For some of them rose up, but did not reign. After this I looked, and see, the twelve wings appeared no more, nor the two little wings. And there was no more on the eagle's body, but three heads that rested, and six little wings. Then I also saw that two little wings separated themselves from the six, and remained under the head that was on the right side, for the four remained in their place. And I looked, and see. The wings that were under the wing thought to appoint themselves and to reign. And I looked, and see, there was one appointed, but soon it appeared no more. And the second went away sooner than the first. And I looked, and see, the two that remained also thought within themselves to reign. And when they thought so, see, one of the heads that was at rest awoke, that which was in the midst it was greater than the two other heads. And then I saw that the other two heads were joined with it. And see, the head was turned with those who were with it, and ate up the two wings under the wing that would have reigned. But this head put the whole earth in fear, and reigned over all those who dwelt on the earth with great oppression. And it governed over the world more than all the wings that had been. And after this I looked, and see, 
the head that was in the mist suddenly appeared no more as the wings. But the two heads remained, which in like manner also ruled over the earth and over those who dwelt in it. And I looked, and see, the head on the right side devoured that which was on the left side. Then I heard a voice which said to me, Look in front of you and consider that which you see. And I looked and saw what was like a roaring lion chased out of the forest. And I saw that it sent out the voice of a man to the eagle and said, Listen, I shall speak with you. And the Most High says to you, Are you not that which remains of the four beasts, whom I made to reign in my world, that the end of their times might come through them? And the fourth came, and overcame all the beasts that were past, and had power over the world with great fear, and over the whole circle of the earth with much evil oppression. And it dwelt upon the earth for a long time with deceit. For you have judged the earth, but not with truth. For you have afflicted the meek. You have hurt the peaceable. You have loved the false. And destroyed the dwellings of those who brought forth fruit. And have thrown down the walls of those who did you no harm. Therefore your wrongdoing has come up before the Most High and your pride to the Almighty. The Most High has also looked upon the proud times, and see, they have ended, and its abominations are complete. And therefore you, eagle, appear no more, nor your horrible wings, nor your evil wings, nor your wicked heads, nor your evil claws, nor your whole worthless body that all the earth may be refreshed and may return, being delivered from your violence, and that it may have expectancy for the judgment and kindness from he who made it. And it came to be, while the lion spoke these words to the eagle, I looked, and see, the head that remained, and the four wings appeared no more. And the two went forward and appointed themselves to reign. And the reign was short, but full of unrest. And I looked, and see, they appeared no more. And the whole body of the eagle was burned, so that the earth was in great fear. Then I woke from great fear out of the troubled trance of my mind and said to my Ruach, See, you have done this to me because you searched out the ways of the Most High. Yet see, I am weary in my mind and very weak in my Ruach, and there is little strength in me for the great fear with which I was afflicted this night. Therefore I now plead to the Most High that he shall come from me to the end. And I said, O oh, Yahuwah who reigns, if I have found favor before your eyes, and if I am made right with you before many others, and if my prayer indeed comes up before your face, encourage me then, and show me, your servant, the interpretation and clear meaning of this fearful vision, that you may fully come from my being, for you have judged me worthy to show me the last days. And he said to me, This is the interpretation of the vision. The eagle, what you saw come up from the sea is the rain which was seen in the vision of your brother, Daniel. But it was not explained to him, therefore I now declare it to you. See, the day shall come that a rain shall rise up on earth, and it shall be feared above all the rains that were before it. And twelve kings shall reign in it, one after another, of which the second shall begin to reign and shall have more time than any of the twelve. This is what the twelve wings signify which you saw. As for the voice which you heard speak, and that you saw to not go out from the heads, 
but from the midst of his body. This is the interpretation. At the time of that rain, great struggle shall arise, and it shall stand in danger of failing. Nevertheless, it shall not fall then, but shall be restored again to its beginning. And as you saw the eight small wings underneath clinging to its wings, this is the interpretation. Eight kings shall arise within it, whose time shall be short, and their years swift. And two of them shall perish, the middle of his time approaching. Four shall be kept until their end begins to approach, but two shall be kept until the end. And as you saw three heads resting, this is the interpretation. In the last days the Most High shall raise up three reigns, and in this shall renew many matters, and they shall have the reign of the earth, and of those who dwell in it with much oppression, above all those who were before them. Therefore they are called the heads of the eagle. But these are they who shall accomplish his wickedness, and who shall complete his latter end. And when you saw that the great head appeared no more, it signifies that one of them shall die on his bed, but with pain. As for the two that remain, they shall be slain with the sword, for the sword of the one shall devour the other. But in the end it shall fall through the sword itself. And as you saw two wings under the wings passing over the head that is on the right side, this signifies that these are they whom the Most High has kept to the end. This is the short reign full of trouble, as you saw. And the lion, whom you saw rising up out of the forest, roaring and speaking to the eagle, and rebuking it for his unrighteousness with all the words which you have heard. This is Hamashiach, whom the Most High has kept for them, and for their wickedness on to the end. He shall reprove them, and shall reproach them for their cruelty. For he shall stand them before him alive in judgment, and shall rebuke them, and reprove them. For he shall deliver the rest of my people with kindness, those who have been scattered from my borders, and he shall make them joyful until the coming of the day of judgment, of which I have spoken to you from the beginning. This is the dream that you saw, and these are their interpretations. Only you have been approved to know this secret of the Most High. Therefore write all these that you have seen in a book, and hide them, and teach them to the wise of the people, whose hearts you know may understand and guard these secrets. But wait here yourself yet seven days more, that it may be shown you whatever pleases the Most High to declare to you. And with that, he went his way. And it came to be, when all the people saw that the seven days had passed, and I had not come again into the city, they all gathered together, from the least to the greatest, and came to me and said, And what have we offended you? And what evil have we done against you, that you leave us? And sit here in this place. Of all the prophets, only you are left, as a cluster of the vineyard, and as a candle in a dark place, and as a haven or ship preserved from the storm. Are not the evils which have come upon us enough? If you forsake us, how much better it would have been for us if we had also been burned in the midst of Sion. But we are no better than those who died there and they wept with a loud voice. Then I answered them and said, Take courage, O Yasharal, and do not be grieved, you house of Yaakov, for the Most High has remembered you, and the Almighty has not forgotten you and your trial. As for me, I have not forsaken you, neither have I departed from you, but I have come to this place to pray for the desolation of Sion and that I might seek kindness for the humiliation of your mitdash. And now, everyone make your way home, and after these days I shall come to you. So the people made their way into the city, as I commanded them. But I remained in the field seven days, as the messenger commanded me, and ate only the flowers of the field in those days, and my food from the plants.
and it came to be after seven days. I dreamed a dream by night, and see, the wind rolled from the sea that stirred up all its waves. And I looked, and see, the wind formed the likeness of a man from the heart of the sea. And the man flew with the clouds of the Shamayim. And when he turned his face to look, all that was seen under him trembled. And whenever the voice went out of his mouth, all those who heard his voice burned as the earth falls away when it fills the fire. And after this I looked, and see, a crowd of men without number was gathered together from the four winds of the Shamayim to overcome the man who came out of the sea. But I looked and see, he had carved himself a great mountain that goes up on it. And I tried to see the region or place from which the mountain was carved, and I could not. And after this, I looked and see, all those who were gathered together to overcome him were very afraid, and yet were bold to fight. And look, as he saw the violence of the crowd that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held a sword, nor any weapon of battle. But I only saw that he sent what looked like a blast of fire out of his mouth, and a flaming breath out of his lips, and he threw out a storm of sparks out of his tongue. And they were all mingled together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great storm, which fell with violence on the crowd that was prepared to fight and burned up every one of them, so that suddenly none was seen of the innumerable crowd, but only dust and a smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. Afterward, I saw the same man come down from the mountain and call to himself another peaceful crowd. And many people came to him, of whom some were glad, some were soft, and some of them were bound, and some brought others with offerings. Then I was sick through great fear, and I woke and said, You have shown your servant these wonders from the beginning, and have counted me worthy that you should receive my prayer. Now show me the interpretation of this dream also. For as I consider in my understanding, woe to those who are left in those days, and much more woe to those who are not left behind. For those who are not left shall be grieved, now I understand that which is laid up in the latter days, which shall come upon them, and to those who are left behind. Therefore they have come into great danger and much distress, as these dreams declare. Yet it is better for he who is in danger to come to these, than to pass out of the world as a cloud, and not see that which shall come to be in the last days. And he answered me, and said, I shall show you the interpretation of the vision, and I shall open to you that which you have asked. When you spoke of those who are left behind, this is their interpretation. He who shall endure the danger in that time guards himself. Those who have fallen into danger are those who have works, and belief toward the Almighty. Notice, therefore, that those who are left behind are more Baruch than those who are dead. This is the meaning of the vision. When you saw a man coming up from the midst of the sea, he is the one whom Allah, the Most High, has kept for a long time, whom by himself shall deliver his creation, and he shall lead those who are left behind. And when you saw that a blast of wind and fire and storm came out of his mouth, and that he held neither sword nor any weapon of battle, but that his rushing in destroyed the whole crowd that came to overcome him. This is the interpretation. See, the days are coming when the Most High shall begin to deliver those who are on the earth, and those who dwell on the earth shall be astonished at his coming. And one shall begin to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, and one reign against another. And the time shall be when these come to pass, and the signs take place which I showed you before. And then my bond shall be declared, whom you saw as a man ascending. 
But when all the people hear his voice, every man in their own land shall leave the battle they have against one another. And an innumerable crowd shall gather together, as you saw them, coming with desire to overcome him in battle. But he shall stand on top of Mount Sion, and Sion shall come, and shall be shown to all men, being prepared and built, as you saw the mountain carved with our hands. And he, my bond, shall rebuke the wicked deeds of those nations, whom have fallen into the storm for their wicked life, and shall lay their evil thoughts before them. And the torture with which they shall begin to be tortured, which are like flames. And he shall destroy those without works by the law which is comparable to me. And when you saw that he gathered another peaceful multitude to himself, those are the ten tribes which were carried away captive out of their own land in the time of Husha the king, whom Shalmaneser the king of Asher led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so they came to another land. But they took this counsel among themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the Gentiles and go out to a distant land where mankind had not dwelt, that there they might guard their laws which they had not kept in their own land. And they'd entered into Parath by the narrow places of the river. For at that time the Most High showed signs for them and held the flood till they had passed over. But there was a great way to go through the land of a year and a half, and that region is called Harosheth. Then they dwelt there until the last days. And when they began to come, the Most High shall hold the springs of the river again, that they may go through. Therefore you saw the multitude at peace. But those who are left behind of your people are those who are found within my borders. Now when he destroys the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, he shall defend his people that remain, and then he shall show them great wonders. Then I said, O oh, Yahuwah who reigns, Show me this. Why have I seen the man coming up from the midst of the sea? And he said to me, As you can neither seek out nor know that which is in the depths of the sea, even so no man on earth shall see my bond or those who are with him, but in his time of day. This is the interpretation of the dream which you saw. And while you alone are enlightened, for you have forsaken your own way and apply your diligence to my law and sought it. You have ordered your life in wisdom and have called understanding your mother. And therefore I have showed you the treasures of the Most High. After another three days, I shall speak further to you and declare to you mighty and wondrous matters. Then I went on to the field giving great praise and thanks to the Most High because of his wonders which he does in due time and because he governs the times and these fall in their seasons and I sat there three days. And it came to be on the third day. I sat under a terebinth. And see, the voice came out of a bush opposite me and said, Ezra, Ezra. And I said, Here I am, Master. And I stood up on my feet. Then he said to me, I clearly revealed myself to Moshe in the bush and talked with him when my people were slaves in Mishraim. And I sent him and led my people out of Mishraim and brought him up to the mount but where I held him with me many days and told him great wonders and showed him the secrets of the times and the end and commanded him saying, These words you shall declare and these you shall hide. And now I say to you, lay up in your heart the signs that I've shown 
in the dreams that you have seen, in the interpretations which you have heard. For you shall be taken away from all, and from now on you shall remain with my bond, and with those who are like you, until the times are ended. For the world has lost its youth, and the times begin to grow old. For the world is divided into twelve parts, and the ten parts of it have gone already, and half of a tenth part. And there remains that which is after the half of the tenth part. Now therefore put your house in order, and reprove your people. Comfort those who are in distress, and now renounce that which is corrupt. Let go of your mortal thoughts, throw away the burdens of man, put off now the weak nature, and lay aside the thoughts that are most grievous to you, and hasten to flee from these times. For even greater evils than those which you have seen shall come to be after this. But see how much the world weakens through age, therefore evil increases much more upon those who dwell in it. For truth has fled far away, and falsehood is close at hand. For the vision which you have seen now hastens to come. Then I answered and said, See, Master, I shall go as you have commanded me, and reprove the people who are present. But those who are born after, who shall admonish them? Thus the world lays in darkness, and those who dwell in it are with foul lights. For your law has been burned, therefore no one knows that which is done by you, or the work that shall begin. But if I have found favor before you, send the Ruach Hakodesh into me, and I shall write all that has been done in the world since the beginning, which was written in your law, that men may find your way and that those who live in the latter days may live. And he answered me, saying, Go your way, gather the people together, and say to them, Not to seek you for forty days, but see, prepare for yourself many writing tablets, and take with you Sarah Yahu, Dabra Yahu, Shalom Yahu, Ethan, and Asiyah, these five who are able to write swiftly, and come here, and I shall light a lamp of understanding in your heart, which shall not be put out, till that which you shall begin to write is complete. And when you are done, you shall publish some, and some you shall show secretly to the wise. Tomorrow at this hour you shall begin to write. Then I went out as he commanded, and gathered all the people together, and said, Hear these words, O Yasharal. At the beginning, our fathers were sojourners in Misraim, from where they were delivered, and received the law of life, which they did not guard, which you have also transgressed after them. Then the land, even the land of Sion, was divided among you by lot, but your fathers, and you have done unrighteousness, and have not guarded the ways which the Most High commanded you. And because he is a righteous judge, in due time, he took from you that which he had given you, and now you are here, and your brothers are among you. Therefore, if you humble your own understanding, and transform your hearts, you shall be kept alive, and after death you shall obtain kindness. For after death the judgment shall come, when we shall live again, and then the names of the righteous shall be revealed, and the works of the wicked shall be declared. Therefore, let no man come to me now, nor seek me for forty days. So I took the five men, as he commanded me, and we went to the field and remained there. And the next day, see, a voice called to me, saying, Ezra, open your mouth and drink what I give you to drink. Then I opened my mouth, and see, he brought me a cup, which was full of water, but the color of it was like fire. And I took it, and drank. And when I had drunk from it, my heart spoke with understanding, and wisdom grew in my breast, for the remembrance in my ruach was strengthened, and my mouth was opened, and no longer closed. And the Most High gave understanding to the five men, and they wrote the extraordinary night visions they were related, which they did not know. And they sat forty days, and wrote in the day, and ate their bread at night. As for me, I spoke during the day, 
and did not keep silent by night. In 40 days they wrote 204 books and it came to be. When the 40 days were complete that the Most High spoke saying, the first that you have written published openly that the worthy and unworthy may read it but guard the seventy last that you may deliver them only to those who are wise among the people for in them is the spring of understanding the fountain of wisdom and the river of knowledge and I did so Behold, speak in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I shall put in your mouth, says Yahuwah, and cause them to be written on paper, for they are trustworthy and true. Do not fear the schemes against you. Do not let the unbelief of those who speak against you trouble you, for all the unbelieving shall die in their unbelief. Look, says Yahuwah, I shall bring plagues upon the world, the sword, scarcity of food, death, and destruction. For wickedness has polluted the whole earth exceedingly, and their evil works are complete. Therefore, says Yahuwah, I shall hold my tongue no more in regard to their wickedness, which they do evilly. Neither shall I tolerate them in that which they wickedly engage themselves. See, the blood of the innocent and righteous cries out to me, and the beings of the righteous protest continually. And therefore, says Yahuwah, I shall surely avenge them and receive all the innocent blood from among them to me. Behold, my people are led as a flock to the slaughter. I shall not allow them to now dwell in the land of Mizraim, but I shall bring them with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and smite Mizraim with plagues, as before, and shall destroy all his land. Mizraim shall mourn, and his foundation shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Lord brings upon it. Those who till the ground shall mourn, for their seed shall fail through the blight and hail, and from a frightening storm. Woe to the world and those who dwell in it, for the sword and their destruction draws near, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, with swords in their hands. For there shall be uproar among men, and they shall invade one another with no regard for their kings nor princes. And the course of their actions shall stand in their strength. A man shall desire to go into a city and not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. Man shall have no compassion for his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and plunder their goods because of the lack of bread and of great distress. Behold, says Alua, I shall call together all the kings of the earth to revere me, who are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east, and Lebanon, to turn themselves one against another and repay what they have done to them, as they still do today to my chosen, so I shall also do and repay into their bosom. Thus says Yahuwah Elua, My right hand shall not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not cease over those who shed innocent blood on the earth. The fire of his wrath has gone forth and consumed the foundations of the earth and the sinners, thy straw that is kindled. Woe to those who sin and do not guard my commands, says Yahuwah. I shall not spare them Go your way, you unbelieving children. Do not defile my set-apart place. 
For Yahuwah knows all those who sin against him. Therefore he gives them over to death and destruction. For now the plagues have come upon the whole earth. And you shall remain in them. For Elua shall not deliver you. Because you have sinned against him. Look. The horrible vision. And its appearance from the east. Where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots. And the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon the earth. That all those who hear them fear and tremble. Also. The Persians raging in wrath shall go forth as the wild boars of the forest, and they shall come in great strength, and engage in battle with them, and shall destroy a portion of the land of Ash. And then the dragons, remembering their nature, shall have the upper hand, and if they ally together, turning themselves in great strength to pursue them, then these shall be troubled and silenced by their strength and shall flee and the enemy shall besiege them from the land of Asher and consume some of them and within their army shall be fear and dread and strife among their kings look clouds from the east and from the north to the south and they are very horrible to look upon full of wrath and storm they shall clash against one another and they shall bring down a great number of storms on the earth even their own storm and from the sword there shall be blood to the waist and dung a man to the camel's hock and there shall be great fear and trembling on the earth and those who see the wrath shall be afraid and trembling shall come upon them and then great storms shall come from the south and from the north and another part from the west and strong winds shall rise from the east and shall prevail and the cloud which he raised up in wrath and the storm stirred up causing fear toward the east and west wind shall be destroyed the great and mighty cloud shall billow full of wrath and the storm with which they make all the earth afraid and those who dwell in it and they shall pour out a horrible storm over every high and lofty place fire and hail and flying swords and many waters so that all fields and all rivers shall overflow with the exceedingly great amount of waters and they shall break down the cities and walls mountains and hills trees of the forest and grass of the field and its grain and they shall move steadily on to Babel and cause her fear they shall come to her and besiege her pouring out the storm and all wrath upon her then the dust and smoke shall go up to the Shamli, and all those who are around her shall bewail her. And those who remain under her shall do service to those who have put her in fear. And you, Asia, who shares in the expectancy of Babel, and are the esteem of her person, woe to you, you wretch, because you have made yourself like her and have adorned your daughters with horn, that they may please and boast in your lovers, who have always desired to commit horn with you. You have followed she who is hated in all her works and devices. Therefore, says Elu, I shall send plagues upon you, widowhood, poverty, scarcity of food, sword and pestilence, to waste your dwellings with destruction and death, and the esteem of your strength shall be dried up as a flaw. The burning that is sent upon you shall rise. You shall be weakened as a poor woman with stripes, and like one flogged with wounds. So you shall not be received by your mighty lovers. What I have proceeded against you so fervently, says Yahuwah, if you had not always slain my chosen, exalting and clapping your hands, and speaking over their dead, when you were drunk, present your lovely face. The reward of your horn shall be in your bosom, therefore you shall be repaid. As you have done to my chosen, says Yahuwah, even so shall Elua do to you, and shall hand you over to evil. Your children shall die of hunger, and you shall fall by the sword. 
Your city shall be broken down, and all those in the field shall perish by the sword. Those who are in the mountain shall die of hunger, and eat their own flesh, and drink their own blood, from hunger of bread and thirst of water. Grieving, you shall pass through the sea, and receive plagues again. And as they pass, they shall rush on the treacherous city, and shall destroy some portion of your land, and consume part of your esteem, and shall return to Babylon, which was destroyed. And you shall be thrown down by them as stubble, and they shall be as fire to you, and shall consume you and your cities, your land and your mountains, and all your woods, and they shall burn up your fruitful trees with fire. They shall carry your children away captive, and see what you have, they shall plunder it, and destroy the loveliness of your face. Woe to you, Babel, and Asia. Woe to you, Mizraim and Aram. Gird up yourselves with sackcloth and hair. Bewail your children, and mourn, for your destruction is at hand. A sword is sent upon you, and who shall turn it back? A fire is sent among you, and who shall quench it? Plagues are sent upon you, and who is he who would drive them away? Shall any man drive away a hungry lion in the forest? Or shall anyone quench the fire and stubble when it has begun to burn? Will one turn again the arrow that is shot from a strong archer? The Almighty Adam sends the plagues. And who is he who drives them away? The fire shall go forth from his wrath. And who is he who will quench it? He shall throw lightnings, and who will not fear? He shall thunder, and who will not be afraid? Yahuwah threatens, and who will not be utterly beaten to dust at his presence? The earth and its foundations quake. The sea rises up with waves from the deep, and its waves are troubled, and also the fish in it. Before Yahuwah, and before the esteem of his power, for his right hand is strong that bends the bow. His arrows that he shoots are sharp and do not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. See, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consumes the foundation of the earth. As an arrow which is shot by a mighty archer does not return. Even so, the plagues that are sent upon the earth shall not return again. Woe is me! Woe is me! Who shall deliver me in those days? The beginning of sorrows and great mourning. The beginning of scarcity of food and great death. The beginning of fighting and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils come? See, scarcity of food and plague. Distress and anguish are sent as scourges for correction. But for all these they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor ever remember the scourges. See, fools shall cost so little on earth that they shall think themselves to be well at ease. And then evil shall grow on earth, the sword, scarcity of food, and great confusion. For many of those who dwell on earth shall perish from scarcity of food. And the others who escape the hunger the sword shall destroy, and the dead shall be thrown out as dung, and there shall be no one to comfort them, for the earth shall be at waste, and the city shall be thrown down. There shall be no one left to till the earth and to sow it. The trees shall give fruit, but who shall gather them? The grapes shall ripen, and who shall tread them? For all places shall be barren of mankind so that one shall desire to see another and to hear his voice. For there shall be ten left of a city and two of the field, who shall hide themselves in the thick forests and in the caves of the rocks. As in an orchard of olives, there are three or four olives left on every tree. Or as there are left some clusters when the vineyard is gathered by those who diligently seek through the vineyard. Even so, there shall be three or four left by those who search their houses with the sword in those days. And the earth shall be laid waste, and its fields shall grow old, and its roads 
and all its paths shall grow full of thorns, because no one travels through there. The maiden shall mourn, having no bridegrooms. The women shall mourn, having no husbands. The daughter shall mourn, having no helpers. The bridegroom shall be destroyed in the fighting, and their husband shall perish for scarcity of food. Hear now these and understand them, you servants of Yahuwah. This is the word of Yahuwah. Receive it. Do not believe the mighty ones of whom Yahuwah spoke. See, the plagues draw near and do not delay. As when a woman with child in the nine months brings forth her bond, within two or three hours of her birth, great pains encompass her womb. Such pains, when the child is coming forth, that do not ease for a moment. Even so, the plagues that come upon the earth shall not be eased, and the world shall mourn, and sorrow shall come upon it from every side. Hear my words, O my people. Prepare for battle, and in those evils be as sojourners on the earth. He who sells, let him be as he who flees, and he who buys, as one who loses. He who deals in merchandise, as he who has no profit from it and he who builds as he who shall not dwell in it he who sows as if he shall not reap so also he who plants the vineyard as he who shall not gather the grapes those who marry as those who shall bear no children and those who do not marry as the widowers and therefore those who labor labor in vain for foreigners shall reap their fruits and plunder their goods, overthrow their houses, and take their children captive. For they shall bring forth children into captivity and scarcity of food. And those who obtain their merchandise by robbery, the more they adorn their cities, their houses, their possessions, and their own persons, the more shall I be wroth with them for their sin. Says Yahuwah, as a whore envies an upright, honest, and virtuous woman, so righteousness hates wickedness when she adorns herself and accuses her to her face. When he comes who shall defend the one who diligently searches out every sin on the earth. And therefore do not be like her, nor her works. For yet a little while, and wickedness shall be taken away from the earth, and righteousness shall reign among you. Let not the sinner say that he has not sinned. For Allah shall burn coals of fire upon his head, who says before Yahuwah Allah in his esteem, I have not sinned. See, Yahuwah knows all the works of man, their schemes, their thoughts, and their hearts, who spoke but the word, Let the earth be made. And it was made. Let the Shamayim be made. And it was created. By his word the stars were made and he knows the number of them. He searches the deep and its treasures. He has measured the sea and what it contains. He has shut the sea in the midst of the waters and with his word he has suspended the earth upon the waters. He spreads out the Shamayim like a span. He has founded it upon the waters. He has made springs of water in the desert and pools upon the tops of the mountains that the floods might pour down from the high rocks to water the earth. He made man and put his heart in the midst of the body and gave him breath, life, and understanding. And indeed the Ruach of all should die, who made all and searches out all that is hidden in the secret places of the earth. Surely he knows your plans and the thoughts of your hearts, even those who sin and want to hide their sin. Therefore, Yahuwah searches out all your works exactly, and he shall put you all to shame. And when your sins are produced, you shall be ashamed before all, and your own sin shall be your accusers in that day. What shall you do? Or how shall you hide your sins before Allah and his Malachim? See, Allah himself is the judge. Revere him. Cease from your sins and forget your wickednesses to no longer strive in them forever. So Allah shall lead you out and deliver you from all trouble. For see, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you and they shall take some of you away 
and feed the idol with that which is offered to idols. And those who consent to them shall be mocked and reproached and trampled underfoot. For in every place and in the neighboring cities, there shall be a great uprising against those who revere Yahuwah. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but continue ravaging and destroying those who revere Yahuwah. For they shall lay waste and take away their goods and throw them out of their houses. Then those who are my chosen shall be known, and they shall be tried as gold in the fire. Hear, O you, my beloved, says Yahuwah. See, the days of trouble are at hand, but I shall deliver you from them. Do not be afraid, neither doubt, for Allah is your guide, and the guide of those who guard my commands and orders. Says Yahuwah, Allah, do not let your sins weigh you down, and do not let your wickednesses rise up. Woe to those who are bound up in their sins, and covered with their wickedness like a field overgrown with bushes, and its path covered with thorns, so that no man may travel through. It is left naked, and is thrown into the fire to be consumed by it.